Finally, before we conclude the program for the day, we welcome Honorable Ruby Sohota, Member of Parliament, Brampton North. MP Sohota will, will be giving the closing remarks. Welcome. Thank you, Jerry, for that presentation. It was very informative, actually. Me and my staff kind of ran in when we heard uh, that there was a talk on federal funding happening because, tell you the truth, there was a bit large learning curve for me in my office as well to figure out all the different pockets of money and a lot of the people that are sitting in the audience today. Um, some have come through my office looking for different funding opportunities and, uh, and that's how I've made some relationships in this organization. So it's probably the largest problem that I see small to medium sized businesses struggle with. Uh, so thank you for the work that you do at your consulting firm to help with that. Um, I've heard it's been an incredible day today. Uh, I know that uh, those that are in the room right now, thank you so much, but I know that many, many attendees have come through today for different sessions, and I'd like to really thank the Canada India Foundation for putting this together, all of your board members. I know it's not easy to line up that many speakers and put together uh, workshops in such a professional manner as you have today. Um, creating the Canada India Women Entrepreneurs Conference and for bringing together women entrepreneurs, trailblazer, trailblazers in industry, mentors, community leaders, advocates and friends for a day of important conversations, workshops and networking. That's what you've done here today and I know that everyone that's come through thanks you for that. There's a lot of talent, innovation, and drive in this room, and those are qualities that are universal. However, it's access to opportunity that is not. Women, and specifically women of visible minorities, like so many of us in this room, still face unique societal obstacles and barriers to business. But we know that our voices deserve to be heard and that diversity of thought and talent in our, work, in our workplaces drives innovation, attracts investment, and strengthens our communities. That's why our government is investing in the full and equal participation of women in our economy and society. To all the women entrepreneurs in this room, my friend and colleague, Mary Ng, the Minister of Small Business and Export Promotion, said it best when she was here earlier today, that your government, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, my colleagues, and I support you. We're standing right here behind you. We're committed to helping you succeed. That is why we created the first ever Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy a $2 billion investment that will double the amount of women-owned led businesses by the year 2025. Uh, Jerry mentioned a little bit about this fund in his presentation, and I'd like to also say that I was very excited uh, that businesses here in Brampton did receive money from this fund. Uh, BMP Metals, which is located very close to where we're standing today, received $100,000 uh, of money from this fund. It's, it's a great woman-led business that is innovating, creating new technologies, and I was quite impressed by seeing all the contracts and all the countries that they're exporting to right here from out of Brampton. So that's exactly why we're investing in ecosystems of support across this country that will help women entrepreneurs and women-led companies succeed. That's why we're investing directly in women-led companies that are looking to grow and to export. That is why we passed a bill that asks federally regulated corporations to disclose the gender makeup of, and diversity of their board of directors and senior management. I've recently uh, looked at some studies myself and it shows <clears throat> It shows that women that apply for financing 
oftentimes, even if they have the exact same pitch, are left behind. 68% of the time, even with similar pitches, it is male-led companies that end up getting the financing, whether it's due to experience or whether it's due to the uh, unconscious biases that we have in society, that is the case. So what we are trying to create is a society, when I talked earlier about opportunity, a society that has opportunity for all people of all backgrounds, of all genders. It's not to leave men behind, it's to bring the men along with us because we know when we invest in women and when we have more women succeeding in businesses, more women working in the economy, uh, which is the case today. Now more than ever before, women are participating in Canada's workforce and the results are right before your eyes. The results are un, um, unforeseen growth. Uh, we are doing better than all G7 countries. Uh, our growth, we've seen in just April alone, 100,000 jobs created by Canadians, a million since 2015. This growth is due to all people investing and all people working within our economy. And the only way we will do better, men will do better, is if women are also participating alongside in the economy. So it's because we believe in that diversity and the strength of that diversity and the full economic participation of all members in our society to being critical to competitiveness and to helping, we also believe in helping newcomers, young people and indigenous business owners tackle these barriers so that they can succeed. These barriers have been faced by many traditionally in our society. Our government knows that Canada works best when it works for everyone. Thank you again to the Canada India Foundation and everyone here today that's made this event such a successful event. Our government is committed to your success because we know that when women succeed, everyone succeeds. So thank you very much. Thank you for your participation today and thank you for sticking around till the very end. Our final plaque presentation today.